Hello, continuing in the world of simple machines, this time looking at pulleys. Um, you might have done some stuff with pulleys at school, um, but if you haven't, you're not missing much because the, the problems aren't usually that interesting. They're mostly used for situations uh, where we're changing the direction of a force. So you get things like this, where you've got a block on a table attached to a string that goes round a pulley, and you might have another block hanging over the side. Um, but because we've got a single string with tension applying throughout over a single pulley, there's no magnification of the force here. We've got the same tension experienced by both blocks. So whatever distance one block moves, the same for the other block. You know, if we had translated this into how do we lift something up situation, so we've still got our string going round a single pulley to try and lift this block up in the air. So we're putting in an effort here. That's our effort. This is our load that we're trying to pick up. Well, we got the same problem. We're not actually magnifying any force up here. The tension experienced by the block as we're lifting it is the effort. So all of the pulley problems that you come across in standard pre-university mechanics, they all have mechanical advantage of one because we're just changing direction. So we want to get away from that and start looking at, well, how do we start multiplying our force up so that we're going to get, um, we're going to be able to lift bigger weights. All right, so here's some different pulley setups you can have. These are all called block and tackle systems. These are the sort of things that you see on our old boats. So we've got a pulley at the top, uh, which is fixed to some surface. So we've got this one up here. We've got a pulley at the bottom, which is loose. And it has the hook on. So this is where we're putting the, the load. So we've got our load hanging off the hook at the bottom. We put our effort in here at the end of the rope. So we're pulling on that. That rope with the tension going all the way through it is, in this case, looping around the top pulley, comes down, loops around the bottom one, and then it goes back up and fixes on the top one again. So this effort that we're putting in which is the tension in the rope, by the time we get to the, the bottom, the, the free full pulley here, which is holding the load, we've now got two tensions pulling upwards. So we got a mechanical advantage of two because we've multiplied up um, our effort there. So the mechanical advantage in this case is two. And this bottom tackle here is going to move up by half the distance that we move the effort through. So if we pull the rope by distance D, the load is gonna go up by distance D over two because we've multiplied the force up. So this is exactly the same principles as we've had with the other simple machines, is that work in, work out, is the conservation of energy. All we're doing in these next four block and tackle systems is we're increasing the number of times we're wrapping the rope round. So in this uh, second one, in the watch tackle, we've done one more loop on the top pulley and we've now fixed the rope down the bottom. So we've now got one, two, three. So that's mechanical advantage of three because we've got three lots of tension. Double tackle, one, two, three, four. Mechanical advantage of two, four. You can see where this is going. We've then got five and then we've then got six by the time we get up to the threefold purchase. So it's very easy to work out the mechanical advantage of each one of these block and tackle systems because we're just counting the number of strings that are attached to the movable part of the pulley system. Now, sometimes these pulley systems are set up a little bit differently, um, but the same principle applies. Uh, in this case, OK, we've got four wheels going on here, four uh, separate pulley wheels, but the top two and the bottom two are fixed together. So they're acting as one wheel, really. Uh, but we're reducing the amount that the ropes are going to be rubbing together and things like that by putting them over separate wheels. We're still working out the mechanical advantage in exactly the same way. Do you see how many ropes are directly attached to the bottom is in the movable part of the block and tackle system, which in this case is one, two, three, four. So we already know that we've got a mechanical advantage of four. So what is the question asking us is just saying the block of mass M 
That's this thing. That's our load, capital MG, uh, lifted at constant velocity by an arrangement shown below. Determine the pulling force. Right. So our F, our effort, uh, only needs to be a quarter of this because we've got a, me uh, a mechanical advantage of four. So F is going to be equal to MG over four. Now you can start. Um, riffing on this a little bit i mean we we know yeah this is assuming that we've got 100 percent efficiency uh, and it's pretty obvious where our inefficiencies are going to come from every time we're wrapping uh the rope around one of these pulleys we're getting friction we've got the weight of the movable part of the pulley i mean the top bit doesn't matter because it's fixed up here at the ceiling but we're lifting these two pulleys at the bottom with plus the thing that's connecting them so we've got the weight of that is going to uh, reduce our efficiency. Um, and as I was saying, a lot of these pulley systems were used on, on boats at sea. Well, when these ropes get wet, um, I mean, they're not light as it is, but when they get wet, they can get very heavy. So although it looks as though, oh, yeah, we can just keep on increasing our mechanical advantage by having longer and longer ropes and wrapping them around more and more pulleys, Eventually, you get to a point where they just become too inefficient. You've got too much rope, which is too heavy. You've got too many pulleys, which is too heavy, um, and also too much friction. But, you know, let's see what's going on here. You know, if if we did, if we were applying this force, yeah, so we're, let's say MG was, was 100, say. So let's say that was equal to 100. So we're not lifting a lot. Uh, we don't really need a pulley system, but I'm just picking a simple number to work through. So if we were doing F is equal to 100 in this in this um, 25, sorry, in this case, because we're only having to do a quarter of it. And that's giving us 100 um, percent efficiency. But what if we were going to add in uh, the pulley weight? You know, what if we needed uh, instead of just lifting 100 newtons, we've now got an extra 10 newtons to lift up. Uh, the pulley well we need to add that in and say well we're now doing 110 um all in all divided by four that needs to be the effort that we're putting in um so that's going to come out at our 25 plus another two and a half so we've got 27.5 uh, newtons that we're having to put in um but what we're actually <clears throat> excuse me getting out of this is nowhere near as good um so our efficiency is going to be 25 over 27.5 so we've already lost some of our efficiency if we were going to add in friction and say um and we can measure the friction on this we don't have to have a guess at what it is we think well if we've got that set up and we had a force meter that we were pulling on here in order to gauge our effort and we're, we're finding well actually it doesn't start moving until we're doing 35 newtons so we know we've got another 7.5 newtons of friction that we're having to work against well our efficiency has dropped even more then if that's when we're now saying okay friction clearly in this setup has come out at 7.5 newtons because that's what our force meter is telling us now we've got efficiency of 25 over 35 for the full system and we can work these out i mean we we know this 10 newtons we can get what the mass is you know we can just weigh this uh bottom block here and you weigh it and you immediately get the extra force that we have to put in you use a force meter to start pulling on stuff um I and mean, you could even and we worked out the friction you could even put the whole lot in together and just say well okay combined when we pull on the force meter, we have to have 35 newtons, whereas we're only lifting um, 100 newtons with a mechanical advantage of four. So our efficiency is then coming out at five sevenths. So we're only getting about 72% efficiency on this particular system. But you see how easy it is to work out what the efficiency is on these systems it's not something that's just hidden away or how on earth do we get what these losses are just attach the force meter and off you go all right other types of question you can get i mean here's one where we've got a more elaborate pulley system 
Um, okay, we don't need to read through all of the text here. It's just saying this is being held in equilibrium. So we've got some uh, plank here um, of length L, mass per unit length rho. So we know that our load, this is the load that we've got. Um, that's our load, which is going to be rho times L, because that would be the mass, length times mass per unit length times G. So that is our load. This is our effort. Um, our effort here is going to be mg if the mass of A is m. And it's just saying, well, what does m need to be? Well, we just need to work out the mechanical advantage of our system. And to get the mechanical advantage, just make sure we don't pick the wrong strings. We need to look at the string that is the effort string. So that's this one. It's going up over here, down, round there, over that one, round here and up there. That's our effort string. It's got nothing to do with these ones. So how many effort strings have we got attached to um, the, the load? One, two, three, four. Once again, we got a mechanical advantage that's equal to four, just counting the strings on the effort string. So we're going to need a quarter of this as our, um, as our effort. So mg over, um, not over, I'm dividing the wrong thing, mg equals rho lg divided by four. A quarter of our load is all we need to put in as effort. Cancel the g's. So we need a mass of rho l divided by four, and that will hold everything in equilibrium. Again, a simple counting exercise of adding up the strings. Sometimes we get problems where they just say, OK, well, we'll let this go and see what happens. Here's a system, got a single string. What happens if we release this? Both of the masses are the same. Uh, so we can say we've got mg going down on both of them. Um, yeah, you can think of uh, the B as being the load and A as being the effort, but it doesn't really matter quite as much when you're looking at these just less let it run sort of setups there's our tensions going through the string a is going to accelerate downwards b we know because the mechanical advantage is clearly two on this because we've got two tensions going up two parts of the string attached to the load um, the acceleration of the load must be half of the acceleration of the effort um, because if we've doubled the force we must have halved the distance so we've halved the velocity so we've halved the acceleration now we can do newton's second law for both of these masses so for mass a we can say net force is mg minus t which is equal to ma for mass b we can say that 2t minus mg is equal to ma over 2. And now we just need to solve these uh, simultaneously. Um, that means, well, we can say that t is mg minus ma. So subbing that into the bottom, we'll have 2mg minus 2ma minus mg equals ma over 2. Cancel all the a's. Uh, m's even we want to find what a is so we need to get a's in one place so we've got g equals 5 over 2a so the acceleration is going to be 2 fifths of g um, so that's quite an easy way of analyzing these we can also then see things like the stress on the upper pulley here we fix this to the ceiling in this particular case but if this pulley here isn't moving as it isn't because it's fixed in place it's got two lots of tension pulling down because remember these tensions always pull away from the object so we've got tension down there and another tension down there so that's 2t pulling down so we must have the same here we've got two lots of tension going through this fixing at the top so it's giving us uh, a constraint on how strong this fixture has to be at the ceiling, because if it can't support two lots of tension, then we're in trouble. Um, so those are the sort of questions that you can go through in 
uh, pulleys. Um, very easy to work out the mechanical advantage, quite easy to do the analysis on a lot of them, and very, very easy to have real world cases where you can work out the efficiency just by pulling out a force meter. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot to be done here with, with pulleys. They're, they're really undersold in the problems that you get in uh, things like A-level mechanics questions because they are just treated as a direction changer. So looking at it like this, where you can see the mechanical advantage, you can really see the power um, in pulley systems.